Okay. Now then, <laughs> I want to run a parallel of God's kingdom and how it works. How it works. And why is it important for us to have power and authority? So you've got the federal government. You've got airports all around the place. You've got local TSA agents that they may live in a city, Atlanta, Dallas, Fort Worth, wherever, and they're airports, and they get hired on. They got called out. They are chosen. They went through the process. They got interviewed, and the guy, guy or gal said, you're hired. They go in the airport, and now what do they do? They impact and influence the will of the government, which is what? To protect its citizens. They have a badge. I'm sure if something goes down, they got guns and all kinds of stuff to take care of stuff. They've got equipment, they've got weapons, they've got power, and they've got authority. So now Jesus in his kingdom, where is his kingdom? In heaven. The Bible says that there are three levels of heaven. There's a low, this is heaven when you go up in an airplane and you see the sky, that's a level of heaven. There's a second heaven, that's where principalities, demon, demonic forces live and reside. And then there's a third heaven where the king, that's why it's called the there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. See, the kingdom of heaven is where the king permanently resides. That's why the Bible says in the Our Father prayer, he says, Our Father, which art in heaven, that's the third heaven, that's the heaven that's above every other dimension of heaven. That's where Jesus' throne is. In heaven, the third heaven, all right? And so Jesus' throne, the king, lives in this third heaven. He is now called out a body, a church, not a building, a people. He's called out from where? The gates of hell. Every human being, when they're born, they come into the world after Adam's fall into a domain of hell. Mm, that's hard, but it's true. That's why we have to get born again and delivered out of hell. That's why the scripture says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail over it. A gate doesn't move. A gate is a boundary that locks someone in. So everyone outside of the kingdom of God is, guess what? In the kingdom of evil, in the kingdom of darkness. And so our job then, as the ecclesia, as the church called out, is to deliver and rescue those that are in these gates and bring them into the kingdom. But you can't do that unless you got power and unless you got authority. Power and authority has nothing to do with membership and how much money they're going to give you. Do you think God's purpose, God's kingdom is going to be dependent on a function of somebody giving money? Do you think God's kingdom progressing is going to be a function of how good you can preach and sing? <laughs> Are they bad things? No, but it's the primary function. Do you, is it going to stop God's kingdom from moving forward? No. I don't care how charismatic the leader is. I don't care how much... It, it, how good it is, I don't care. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the powerhouse. It can't be the power and authority for his church. The power and authority. So that's what I want to talk to you today about. The power and the authority of what DL360 operates in and what we come in. We're not coming in someone's ego. We're not coming in that power. Here's why. Because remember the second heavens that I talked about? That's where your enemy is. See, the terrorists that, that flew the planes into the tower, those are the enemy. You need power and you need authority. Why? Because you have an enemy. We have an enemy. <laughs> ah, Let's go really quickly. Go to Ephesians 6. A lot of you know this, but... I want you to turn in your Bibles and use it so you can know. Because listen, if we don't understand this, if we don't understand these fundamentals, we can't take off. And if we just go and take off just to go take off, what are we doing? That's why we're, it's not about how many people. People are going to come. 
but it's about how many people understand the king's original intent. So Ephesians chapter 6 says in verse 12, well, start in verse 10. We know it all well. This is the Apostle Paul, and he's saying, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So now if you go about outside of the power of his might, you're going to get yourself in trouble. (laughs) He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or strategies of the devil. For we do not, this is good, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Praise God. Here's the thing. So the second heavens, you remember what I talked about? The people that you're fighting with, the things that may be held up on this first earth, that's not who you're fighting. So if we get locked up and tied up on this first heaven, this fir- the stuff, the things that may seem like is blocking us and holding us apart, it's not, that's not the root. It's like in our yard, we pull out... I, you know, sometimes the weeds in Texas are so deep. They, d- weeds in Texas have deep roots. So if you just break the top of the weed off, it's going to grow right back. You haven't eliminated it. You've got to dig down, pull the root up, and so you don't have the weed again. And so if we don't recognize that our enemy, the people on your job aren't your enemies. <laughs> the enemy is in that second heaven. See, it says in heavenly places. What is the heavenly places? The heavenly places are that second heaven tear that second layer in heaven. Again, you can't see it. It's invisible, but it exists. It, it, it's beautiful. My son, Kyle, he asked me this question. He said, um, how come we can't see the air that goes into our noses, that gets into our lungs to make us breathe? These kids blow me away. <laughs> I was like, huh, never thought about that. But it proves that, listen to me, there are invisible things that you can't see that, in, that impacts physical things that you can see, feel, and touch that show physical results, and there are results from it. So air you can't see, but you know you're breathing and you're alive. See, we've got to start to understand that there's an invisible kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. There's a kingdom of darkness. Yeah. And then there's this, heaven, this, this earthly realm that we live in. So all of the things that we're faced against, our enemy, the terrorist against us, is that demonic realm. you got to understand where the battle is. All right? All right. So if this is the enemy, if this is the battle that we're facing, <laughs> you need power and you need authority. See, all of the sins that we're facing in the world, all of the things that are going on in the world, people, see, the enemy uses ideas from that second realm. He uses ideas, thoughts to get people to do certain things. That's why I'm telling you, the people that are coming against you, the people that may be attacking you in your lives, you've got power and authority above them, not through them, but through the demonic forces that are controlling them. (laughs) <laughs> because the heaven that you're from, your, your central government is above even the demonic forces. Jeez. <sighs> so you got to understand that. Okay. Like I said, if you go into the airports and the airport agents, the TSA agent has no power and no authority to stop the enemy, guess what? The enemy is going to attack you. The enemy is going to get at you. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, if you go out in the name of yourself and in the name of just doing something because you want to go and do it and you're calling it a church, that's dangerous because it isn't going to work. And when it doesn't work, what do we see? The results decline. People giving up because it just doesn't work. There's no power to get things done. Okay. (laughs) Let's look at Matthew 28. Are you all doing okay? All right. Thank you. Very quiet. Matthew. I know, it's heavy. It's heavy stuff. But Matthew 28. Then I may bring the jets down just a little bit. (laughs) But this stuff, this is what I'm saying. It's, oh my goodness, it's been so, 
I just, I've written this message six times, and I had it done two weeks ago. <laughs> and before I came here, I was still looking at it. Because I'm so, I'm, listen, I'm so passionate. I'm so passionate. <laughs> I'm so passionate about doing what Jesus wants done. Like, I don't want to, I don't have to do this to get paid and make money. I don't get my money from this. It's not about money. I got a lot of other stuff going on that I could be doing. But I'm so passionate about him and what he wants done. Anyway, Matthew 28, verse 16. No, let's go to verse 18. 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Here's what I want to walk you through now. So we've been called out. Ecclesia means to be called out, a chosen people. The Bible says, 1 Peter 2 and 9 says that we're a royal priesthood. It's a, it says we're a holy nation. That's why the, the Islam is called the nation of Islam. Because they're thinking about it as a nation. <laughs> But the kingdom of God is a nation. The ecclesia is a nation of royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Kings and priests. Oh, Jesus. And so he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, I, and lo, I will always, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Listen to this. He calls us out. If he calls us out, it's just like the TSA agent being called out and having no badge and no authority. But he calls us out, and then he gives us power and authority. Where does it come from? Here's the supply chain. He says, all power has been given to me by my Father. So God the Father gave Jesus Christ all power in earth and in heaven. All power. All of it. All power all authority has been given to me. There's only one person that could give somebody the power and the authority of heaven and earth. Do you realize there are like 500 million galaxies or something like that? We're a part of the Milky Way galaxy, which is one out of 500 million. And so the creator of that has the authority to give power to who he wants to give it to. Who did he give it to? He gave all of that power and all of that authority to his son. Jesus. Oh, I love it. And so, Acts chapter 2. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Come on with me. Come on with me. This is going to be good. It's worth it. Acts chapter 2, verse 32. Because see, as the church, if you don't know where your power comes from, and you don't even know if you've got any power and authority, you're just like a TSA agent, and someone's walking in to the airport with a bomb in their suitcase, and you have no power and you have no authority to stop them and open up the suitcase and see what's in it. You realize... <laughs> Every time you give, I, this blows me away. Every time you send your suitcase through customs or security and you get it to your house and you open it up, they've got a little note in there. <laughs> Inspected by the TSA. That's bold. Because who can come in your house and open up your stuff and then leave a note and say, I was here, I checked it out and everything is good. They can go in your suitcase, look at all your stuff and say, thank you very much. Why? You've got to have power and authority to do that. Where do they get power and authority to do that? From Washington, D.C. If you want to go through their airport, they can go through your stuff. they got power and they got authority. So now, you as the church called out, when these demonic forces attack you and come against you and come against your house and come against your church and come against your work and come against your job, what kind of power and what kind of authority that you have? All of it. And if you don't know you've got all of it, everything is going to crumble. It's dangerous. So here's, the, here's, here, here's how it goes. So uh, God the Father gives Jesus all of the authority. Let's read Acts chapter 2. That's where I was going with that. Acts chapter 2, verse 32 says, Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 32 says, This Jesus... God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. 
Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, where is God? God is in heaven. God the Father never leaves heaven. He's sitting in heaven on his throne, and he, he isn't worried or concerned because he created everything. He cre- oh. uh, so, therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God the Father has made Jesus, whom you crucified, watch this, Lord and Christ. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me now through this part. So he's saying... After Jesus Christ has been crucified, he's been filled with the Holy Spirit. Guess what? He got his power and authority from the Father, the one. There's only one. That's why the Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, a lot of people start to believe that there's many ways to this Father, right? A lot of people believe, yeah, there's a higher being, there's a higher authority, but we can get to him from this way. We can get to him from that way. But he says, no, listen to me. There's only one way. Through my son, Jesus Christ, I am the truth, the way, the and the life. But what I want you to see is that Jesus Christ, this one that you crucified, God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, has given them this title, this name. Jesus is Lord and Christ. I love the way he said Lord and Christ. So there's the Lord part, and then there's the Christ part. There are two pieces of this. This is good. So here's the thing now. So he's saying he is not only Jesus, Lord, see, Lord is his title, king. He is Lord of lords, and he is king of kings. He is, he is the king. That's his title. But now, Christ means Messiah. This is a good part. It means Mashiach. It's when Samuel anointed David, he mashiach him. He anointed him. This anointing, then, is the power. So the anointed one, Jesus Christ, Christ means the anointed one and his power. This anointing is the power that goes with the title to give him authority. Oh, Jesus. Do you see now why he says he's got a name that's above every other name, that at the sound of his name, every knee is going to bow And every tongue is going to confess that his title is Lord because he's got all of the power. See, it's kind of like an uh, an officer, a a police officer has a badge and a gun. He's got the authority and power, and then he's got a gun. He's got to operate within the boundaries of his authority, but he's got a weapon to do what he needs to do. See, the power is the ability to get something done. The authority is the right to do it. The power is the ability to get something done. Because if you don't have any power, if you need to lift this and you don't have enough power to get it done, you can't do it. But you could do it and it could be illegal. But now when you've got the power and the authority, now you're in good shape. The power and the authority the title, and the authority. You can now go like the TSA agent and look for where the enemy, the wiles, the strategies of the enemy. You now have power and authority to deal with that. See, that's what we're facing in the world today. Are we looking for membership? Are we looking to pack out a place and have a good time and have a lot of good songs and good singing? And stuff? Are we looking for power and authority? When stuff hits my life, I need power and authority. Because when I leave the service and the worship was good and the message was good, on Monday I need power and I need authority. When I step into my job and people are getting on my nerves and trying to set me up to get me fired, I need power and I need authority over those demonic forces that are operating within them so that I can have dominion in every area of my life. If I don't know where my power and my authority is, I'm just like these lights with no power source. So, for so long now, we've had powerless churches. 
with no power and no authority. And so you can walk in there, the enemy can walk in there and plant a bomb, and there's no power and no authority. Because terrorists can come in because there's no power and no authority. Nobody's checking the enemy at the door. But you've got to come, see, now you can come boldly. Just listen, it's not about just a good message. It's not just about everything is going to be sweet and good and, and, and you just uh, qu quote some scriptures and get it done. That's not what's going to, the enemy is going to come after you. The enemy is going to come attack you. Why? Because you are Jesus Christ's body in the earth. The Bible says that we are his body. He is the head. Uh, Ephesians 1, 22. Or, and Ephesians uh, 4. Or five, where it talks about husbands, uh, wives submitting to husbands, a head of church, and all that good stuff. Listen, you are the body. He is the head. We are in this earth. We then are going to be attacked by a terrorist, the enemy. You've got to have power and authority to deal with the attacks. Oh, boy. Think about that. <laughs> if you've got no power and no authority, what are you going to do, do? It's like taking a knife to a gunfight. No power, no authority. Hmm. Let me read one. And it's just this, this story is very interesting to me. I'll read this and then I'm going to close. We'll pick it up next time. This is in, let's stay in the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 11. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. I, like what I want, I want our culture to be such that we walk in the natural. We live in America right now. That's a territory. But we're really from another place. Like, you call yourself an American citizen which is okay, but I want you to know, like I want us to have this culture of when we walk around, it's like we're not really from here because we're not worried about what's going on here, meaning that we're not in fear about it. We're going to influence it based on this kingdom place of where we're from. Even though we can't see it, we believe by faith that's where we're from. That's right. See, like when you walk around, it, it, you can't walk around. I guess there's nothing wrong with being patriotic to your country, but there's another country higher than this country. And I want us to have a culture of people wonder, why are we so cool? Why are we so calm and collected when all of this stuff is going on? Because we realize in our minds that we're from another place. Yeah. I'm not worried about what's going on here. I'm going to impact here with resources from the power and authority from my kingdom of heaven here on earth. That was God's original intent. I'll talk about that next time, but let me read you this story. It's kind of funny to me, so I want to end with something funny since we had so much heavy stuff. So Acts chapter 19, starting at verse 11. So the Apostle Paul goes on here, and he says in verse 11, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Paul was operating with power and authority, not from earth. He wasn't operating with power and authority from Harvard Medical School and the uh, MIT science and engineering labs. He wasn't walking around with that. He was walking around with the power and authority from another place. <laughs> and so because of that, he worked these unusual mir miracles so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the disease left them and the evil spirits went with them. Listen to the handkerchiefs. Think about this. Conceptualize this. You've got a handkerchief and you've been around this environment of this other kingdom for so long that the power and the authority is so saturated within you that your clothes heal people that are sick. Sicknesses and diseases that other people in the earthly realm couldn't deal with just because you were saturated with this, this other kingdom that it was impacting the physical earth that you could see with your handkerchief. If it wasn't written in the Bible, I wouldn't have believed it. I would have been okay. But he said it. I read it. Now what am I going to do? I believe it. <laughs> I believe we can get saturated with it. We can change things. Anyway, let me read you the funny part. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. 
Also, there were seven sons of Sceva. That sounds a little nasty. A Jewish chief priest who did so. Watch this. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> so they were seeing the apostle Paul operate in this power and this authority. And they were saying, wow, if we could get this going on, we could pack the church. We could pass the bucket around, and we're going to get a lot of money. Some people could pay for some healing. Some people could pay. We can sell handkerchiefs, get their logo on it, and we're going to make a ton of money. Why? Because that's impressive, right? Like if you could get a handkerchief and someone buy it, how much would you charge for that? How much would Steve Jobs have paid to be healed of cancer from that? You'd be the richest person in the world. Right? So these guys are saying, look, we need this power. And they approach this person with an evil spirit to try to work this thing out. Come out of him. Come out of him. Right? And the evil spirit said, hey, now I know the Jesus guy. He had some power and some authority. I know him. I know the Paul dude. He operated with some power and some authority. But who are you? That's operating with no power and authority. Now watch this. Then the man whom the evil spirit was on leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <laughs> Don't play the games. Let me finish reading. This became known both to the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. That's what Jesus Christ wants today. That's what Jesus Christ wants now. He's not, he's not uh, worried or concerned about packing out a building. If he can get six people walking in his power and his authority, he's good. Because those six people walking in his power and his authority are doing way much more than a church packed out that just came to watch a worship presentation and an, and an entertainment event. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the truth. And you've got power and you've got authority because you're not from here, you're from another kingdom. So that the name of Jesus Christ can be... See, that's... When we pray in the name of Jesus, when you pray in the name of Jesus, you're praying in the power and the authority from another kingdom. That's not just something you say at the end of the prayer to end it nicely. You're praying, you've got to embrace the power and the authority with which you walk in. You've got power and authority from a kingdom. Do you see the connection? Power and authority over your circumstances and over your situations. No need to walk out of here in fear, worried, in, in disbelief about stuff. Because you've got power and authority. How? Through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. So now the Holy Spirit is the delegate of power back to human man, to the nation. That word man is uh, a version of it in Hebrew is ish. Ish means not, ish is a plural word. Oh, God, I love his word. Ish is plural, meaning that it's a nation. Let me end it. <laughs> so his delegate then, the Holy Spirit, lives on the inside of us. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you and lives on the inside of me. You've got power from heaven in you on the earth right now through the delegate of the Holy Spirit. And so next time what I want to do is walk you through this Holy Spirit. Walk you through the Holy Spirit. You know, that's why Jesus said it's beneficial. I never, never really got it. Like, why would he say, why would Jesus only come for three years? And like, why didn't he come now? Why did he come then? But he's smarter <laughs> than any of us. He's got it all designed and figured out. And he said, I won't leave you as orphans. 
I will send the helper to help you. This helper is the Holy Spirit. It gives you power and authority to be on this earth, to be away from the home office, to execute power and authority on this earth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for all of those that are here listening under the sound of my voice. Oh, God, I pray that you enlighten our understandings. Let us know that we are your children. Let us know, Lord, that we have your Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, giving us the power and the authority that we need to defeat the demonic forces in the heavenlies. These principalities and powers, these schemes and wiles of the devil, the enemy, we have power and authority, not within our might, not within ourselves, but in you, in you. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ, we take up our authority, our power, we call those things that be not as though they were the things that are destroying our lives the things that are attacking our families the things that are against us the you said Lord that we will prevail against it you said that the power and the authority that we have is like no other and I thank you for your Holy Spirit Holy Spirit speak to us speak to each and every single person in this room today everyone listening under the sound of my voice on this recording Speak to us, Lord. You said you'd never leave us. You'd never forsake us. You will speak to us. You will show us all things. You will teach us all things. You would lead us into the truth. We want your truth, Lord. Speak to us. We invite you in, Holy Spirit. We invite you into our lives, in our families, in our circumstances, in our situations. Holy Spirit, have your way. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. We just surrender to you. We are of your government. We are, our inheritance is that you take care of us. We just worship you. (laughs) We now just worship you. We just worship you. We just rest. We just rest. And we wait for your voice, for you to speak to us. Our ears are to you. direction, the way that we should go, when we should go, how we should go, we submit to you, we surrender to you, you are Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God, I pray, amen. You may be watching this broadcast and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that if you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that you will be saved. I want to pray that prayer with you right now. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that Jesus died for my sins, that I may be brought into the kingdom of heaven, and I may be rescued from the gates of hell. And I just thank you right now by the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit to bring those people out that need rescuing right now from the pit of hell, from the gates of hell, from the gates of Hades. Father, I call them into your kingdom by the power and the authority of the Jesus Christ. I bind all of those demonic forces that may be holding them back and uh, putting thoughts in their head that say they're not qualified, they're not willing, they're not, they don't deserve it. Father, I bind those and I loose your Holy Spirit to speak to them right now, wherever they may be. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're now born again. You're in the kingdom of God. You are a kingdom citizen. God is going to take care of you. Don't worry about a thing. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. So until next time, be blessed and we'll see you. Well, thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you enjoyed this message and it was a blessing to you. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube page so that you can continue to receive uplifting and encouraging messages just like this. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram so that we can stay connected. And if you feel led to give and sow into this ministry, the information is provided for you there below on your screen. I want you to know that all of the money that's given into this ministry is is for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to further the gospel of Jesus Christ across the nation and across the world. So until next time, 
be blessed.